By the way, heaven is a permanent place, it says in chapter 21. Uh, it starts introducing it, but it reminds us of Hebrews 11:10. Remember, the heroes of the faith, Abraham and all the others, waited for a city that had foundations. Remember, Abraham, once he got saved, he left his house in Ur, and he never, he never built another building. He only built altars. And he never bought another piece of property once he became God's friend, except for a gravesite for his wife. The rest of the time, he lived in a tent. He said, I'm a pilgrim and stranger, and I'm going to just go wherever God tells me to go. Wow. But look at this. God always uses vivid, artistic imagery when portraying heaven. His images, the textures, the brilliance, the light, jewels, all that stuff. Here's a little picture of what heaven will be like. Did you know when you read Revelation 21, 19 to 21, the 12 stones that are mentioned parallel the, the high priest's the, the high priest of Israel used to wear this plate right here that looked like that. And we know the colors of those stones. And those are the colors of heaven. Well, obviously, the early believers thought much about heaven. Uh, I, I told you this. I'll read it to you now. Graham Scroggie, a great British Bible teacher, said this. Not without reason did the early church study this book. Practically, the whole of it is reproducible from the Christian writers. Remember I told you they took the sermons that are extant, that are still in existence of the, of the post-apostolic church fathers, post-after the apostles, so those that were of the second century, after the first century. If you look at their sermons, the ones that we have, you can almost get an entire 404 verses quoted in those sermons, the whole book of Revelation. They didn't just do 1, 2, and 3, or 4 and 5, or 21 and 22. They even did all that other stuff. It's amazing. It, it was important to them. They thought much about heaven. Revelation 21, 16. Oh, this one you have to see. It says uh, in Revelation 21, oh, nine minutes, 16. And the city was laid out in a square. Its length was as great as its breadth, and it measured the city with a reed 12,000 furlongs long. Its length and breadth and height, they're all equal. And he measured it. So if you get to that chapter, guess what I found in that chapter? I wrote this for verse 16. Living forever in the Holy of Holies. Did you know there's one place described in the Bible that's exactly a cube? And it's in Exodus. And it gives all the measurements. There's the holy place, you know, where the altar of incense and where the seven branch menorah and where the table of the showbread are. But there in this outer area, the holy place, but inside there was a perfect cube. And that's where God was hovering the Shekinah glory over the, the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. Heaven is a 1,400 mile in each direction cube. It's shaped just like the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle. Every gate, look at verse 22. It says, 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each individual gate was a pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. Each gate is a single 1,500 mile high pearl. Wow. I mean, if the wall is 1,400 miles high, the gate probably extends above. Maybe it's only 1,300 miles. I don't know, but it's a pearl. And just as pearls were formed through the injury of the oyster, we're reminded forever when we go into heaven, we're only going in there because someone was wounded and crushed and bruised for us. That's why they're all pearls. See, everything is intentional in the Bible. And, and God wants us to know how important all these details are for our lives. We'll drink the water of life flowing from underneath the throne. It will supply us everlasting life. Because remember, we're not self-sufficient even in heaven. We need to be kept alive by God. Do you remember when Moses was on the Mount of Sinai? Do you remember what happened to him? He was up there 40 days. What happened after 40 days? He absorbed some of the radiation. Do you remember that? He glowed, scared everybody. He came down glowing in the dark. I mean, he was like one of those luminescent flashlights. He had to cover up his face. It scared everybody because he had been with God. See, God is life, and it flows out of him, and it flows into everything around him, and 